In this video, I'll be reviewing the location and functions of the five brain lobes. Go ahead and grab a piece of paper if you would like to take notes with me. The first brain lobe that we're going to look at is the frontal lobe. Now remember, the frontal lobe is located anterior to the central sulcus. So if we're looking at our brain here, this line right here represents the central sulcus. This region in front of the central sulcus here is all considered the frontal lobe. The first major function of the frontal lobe is voluntary motor control. The frontal lobe plans, coordinates, and modifies our voluntary movements in an area known as the premotor cortex. This area is also known as the motor association area. So the premotor cortex plans out the movement you're going to make, and it sends that plan to the area of the brain right next to it, known as the primary motor cortex. This is also known as the precentral gyrus. The primary motor cortex is the region of the brain that initiates our voluntary movements. So they're going to send that signal out down our brainstem, which goes down our spinal cord, and then out to our skeletal muscles. So if we look at our brain here, we can see the premotor cortex highlighted in this light pink color. Again, it's also known as the motor association area. It's going to plan out our muscle movements, and then it's going to send that plan to the primary motor cortex or precentral gyrus, which will then initiate those voluntary motor movements. Another important function of the frontal lobe is speech production. There's a language area located in our frontal lobe called the motor speech area, or also known as the Broca's area. This is the area of the brain that is responsible for planning out the muscle movements necessary to produce speech. And you can see it highlighted here in orange. And then the third major function of the frontal lobe is higher intellectual functions. Such as judgment, planning, decision making, emotional control, and social behavior. All of this is achieved in a region of the frontal lobe known as the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the anterior most region of the frontal lobe. Next, let's look at the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is located posterior, or in other words, behind the central sulcus. It's located below the parietal bone, and it's highlighted in blue here. So again, this line right here is representing the central sulcus. So this area in blue behind it would all be the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe has two major functions. The first is processing somatosensory sensations. Somatosensory sensations are also known as our general senses. And these are sensations that are felt throughout our entire body, such as touch, pain, pressure, temperature, and stretch, as well as proprioception, 
proprioception is our awareness of our body position. And this is possible because of stretch receptors that are located in our joints and muscles. In order for us to be conscious of our somatosensory senses, it's going to require two areas in the parietal lobe. This is known as the primary somatosensory cortex, also known as the post central gyrus. And it's going to require the somatosensory association area. So if we look at our map the brain, here we can see the primary sensory cortex or somatosensory cortex. Again, it's receiving information about our somatosensory senses, such as touch. And then that information is going to be sent to the association area that's adjacent to that. And our association area is going to take that information, integrate it, and then compare it to our previous experiences and memories so that we can interpret that sensation. The second major function of the parietal lobe is language comprehension. So this refers to our ability to understand language as well as to produce coherent senses that are grammatically correct. And this is going to require a region of the brain known as Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area overlaps with the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. And you can see it located right here. That then brings us to the occipital lobe. This is the posterior most lobe. So if we look at our brain here, it's highlighted in green. So this would be the occipital lobe back here. The occipital lobe has one primary function and that is visual processing. The nerve signals from our eyes go to the back of our brain. And it's going to go to two regions in the back of the brain. We have the primary visual cortex, which will re first receive the signals. And then it will send the signals to the association area that's adjacent to the primary sensory cortex. So if we look here, you can see the visual cortex, which would be the primary visual cortex, and then adjacent to it is its association area. And then next we have the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is located below the lateral sulcus. and it's on the lateral sides of the brain. So this area down here would be the temporal lobe. And you have one on each side of the brain. The temporal lobe has three major functions. It's going to process two types of sensory information. One would be hearing, which we also call audition. So this is going to require our primary auditory cortex and its association area. And then there's also another sense that's perceived here, and that is smell, which we also call olfaction. So that's going to be processed in the primary olfactory cortex. and its association area. And then finally, the last function of the temporal lobe is language comprehension. Because remember, 
Wernicke area, Wernicke's area extends into the temporal lobe. So if we're looking at the temporal lobe here, shown here is the auditory cortex and its association area. But then what's not pictured here is the olfactory cortex and its association area, which is also present in the temporal lobe. And you can also see again that Wernicke's area, which is important in language comprehension, it extends down into the temporal lobe. The fifth brain lobe is the insular lobe, also known as the insula. This is located deep within the lateral sulcus. So in order to see the insular lobe, you'd have to separate the temporal lobe from the frontal lobe and look inside. And there you would see the folds of the insular lobe. The insular lobe is important in our perception of taste. We also call taste gustation. And so this is going to require what we call the primary gustatory cortex and its association area. So as you can see here, the frontal lobe is important in voluntary motor control, speech production, and higher intellectual functions. The parietal lobe is really important in processing somatosensory sensations and is important in language comprehension. The occipital lobe is important in visual processing. The temporal lobe processes hearing, smell, as well as language comprehension, and the insular lobe processes taste.